Welcome. We're going to jump right in. This is going to be C, functions and definitions. Now, what I will tell you is that this is going to be quick because I'm not going to use the PowerPoint anymore. We are going to do it live. So, if you want to follow along, please, please, please navigate to tutorialspoint.com, C programming, C underscore functions dot HTML, HTM, and follow along. All right, let's jump right in. So the first thing we need to understand in this specific uh, uh, teaching session is that functions are the lifeblood of programming. What functions actually do is they allow you to observe or to take a subset of programming statements and then uh, execute them over and over again in your code without having to rewrite them over and over again. Now this is very powerful. This is very powerful. This is the premise behind the modularity of all programming languages. And all programming languages that uh, exist, scripting or not, give you some way, to shape, form, or fashion to take your code and put it inside this little module, whether it's a function or a method, and then give you the ability to execute that anywhere you want to execute it. That's called calling the function. So let's start. So every function has what's called a data type or return type, meaning that what I'm returning from the function is of this type. It contains a function name, which is whatever you want it to be. So in this case, uh, we're going to call it something that's relevant. Uh, parameters, which exist inside the parentheses. And what those parameters do is they give the, uh, the caller of the function the ability to give it data that it would need to do what it needs to do. Sometimes functions are void. They don't return anything, but they also don't need parameters. Sometimes functions are returnable, meaning that they return a value when they're called. And then lastly, we have the function body. So let's go with a little bit of development. So in this case, we're gonna use the example they have in C functions, int max. Now, what am I doing? Let's start over before I even develop it because I'm developing like I'm just writing, right? So first, I need to define the data type that I want to use. The data type that this function is going to give me back when I call it. So in this case, we're going to say integer. Now, what that means is that when the function finishes, the value that's returned to me is going to be data type integer. I'm going to name the function. This is the function name. Let's name it max. Let's just go with the example. And then I'm going to give it parameters. Now, when I give it parameters, those parameters are going to exist inside of max. Now, in this case, I'm not going to put my code inside the main because the main is its own function. What we're going to do is we're going to create our own function. So let's get out of the main. Let's scroll to the bottom here and let's add our function here. So int max. Great. Now, what I want to do is I want to um, add, I want to add the data that I want to use or I want to add my parameters. So. Uh, I need to give the parameter, it's like a variable. A parameter is just a variable that holds information. So I need to give that variable a data type and a name. So we're gonna name it int x, int y. Yes, I'm going off the beaten path, but I'm a developer. I have my own way of thinking. Now in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna create the code that I want to run. So let's just write the code. So in this case, there's a local variable declaration inside of the function. Between these two curly braces, we have our function uh, being called or our function body, which is where all of our programming statements exist. So in this case, int result. We're initializing the variable result on the data type int. Now we have to run an if statement. We want to check to see if x is greater than y. So how do we do that? We're going to write an if statement. If x is greater than y, then I want you to do some stuff. So let's add our braces. And let's write in here results equals x. Let's also add an else branch. Else, meaning catch everything else, results equals uh, y. Now, are we finished? Absolutely not. We need to add a return statement. The reason why we do that is because we want to return a value from the function. So in this case, we're going to have return result. Now, why am I returning the result? Well, that's the whole purpose of this function that we wrote. What we want to do is we want to see if one number is bigger than the other. And if it is, I want you to return it as a result. In this case, we're going to call our function max because it, 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 that's relevant to the function. So we wrote our function. Obviously, Visual Studio likes it. It's outside of the main. If you can see, it's not in the main. And I, I will actually erase all of this so that it makes more sense. There's our main function. 
it's returning zero. Ignore that. That's just there to uh, validate if uh, program ran correctly. Let's see. Uh, runtime. That's all that's there for. So just ignore that return. And here's our function that we wrote. All right, max. We have our data type int. We have our function name max, and we have our parameters int x, int y. We then wrote inside here something we want the program to do, the function to do. Now, the only thing I need to do is run the program, right? Well, will that method or that function run? Well, let's test. It's thinking. It, it's still thinking. We might have some success here. It might run that function. We'll see what happens. I'll drink my coffee while I'm waiting. Would you look at that? I got nothing. Nothing happened. Why? I'll show you why. Because there's nothing in the main. Nothing happened because I didn't tell the program to run this function. It exists. So what is this function then? What, why, where does it exist? If it's not running right now, why did we even write it? We wrote it because we need to give the program a blueprint for the module. Now we need to call the module. We need to tell the program, run that function. How do you do that? It's the same, and I'll give you an example. It's the same as if you got in your car, your, the dealer gave you a key, you got in the car. You try to turn the car on, but you didn't use the key. Would the car turn on? No. So now what we need to do is we need to put the key in the ignition and turn it. How do we do that? We have to call this function. So how do we call the function? Well, in a function declaration, what you need to do is you need to create what's called a uh, abstraction of that function. This function, in all its glory, is called an implementation. An implementation means I am telling you what to do, program. This is what you should run. An abstraction merely means I'm not calling the function body. I don't care about that. I'm calling the function itself. So let's write the implementation for the function and tell the program that is what I want. So in this case, I'm going to say print f because I want to see the output of the function. I'm going to say uh, d because this is an integer, yes? Uh, a greater number is, sorry. And then now what we need to do is we need to call the function. So let's call it. What we need first is the data type of the function, int, or the data type of the value we're getting back from the function. Then we need the function name, max. Now what I need to do is I need to, uh, as a matter of fact, actually, it's probably better if I do it this way. Uh, int uh, answer put int answer here that's not correct where is my ampersand there it is and then I need to uh, call the function so first we need the data type so int answer actually is going to equal the variable I'm sorry the, the call so we need the data type of the function int now I need the name of the function max now what I need to do is I need to give it parameters so the first parameter is X, right? Okay, let's give it a number then, five. What's the second parameter? Integer Y, so let's give it a, a, uh, a number, eight. These are called arguments. What I just did here is I gave arguments to the parameters that exist in the function when I called it. Why are you doing that? Making sure I'm doing this right. I'm sorry. This is, I, I apologize, I messed up. That was called a function declaration. This is what I was talking about. Function declarations are your abstractions. This is basically what the compiler sees. The compiler doesn't see the rest of this. I misspoke, I apologize. What the compiler sees is this. It doesn't see the function body in your abstraction or your, functional, your function declaration. A function declaration is required when you define a function in one source file and you call it in another source file. So if I wanted to put this int max, and we can just do this for posterity's sake. If I wanted to put this int max, if I wanted to put this int max 
All right, there we go, into PCH. I can. Now it exists in PCH. But if I wanted to call this here, I have to declare it. So what I need to do is I need to say, Um, I need to say, testing something. I don't think that matters. I'm going out on one here. I'm gonna run this anyway without this, and I wanna see if it works. Give me a sec. Because I'm already including, so in this case, I'm already including PCH. If you noticed, PCH.H is this function right, is this class right here. I am already including it, okay? So this shouldn't matter. I should be able to get max. See, it sees it. So don't worry about the function declaration. Just worry about being able to call the function. In this case, we're calling the function in the main. In answer is a variable with the data type answer. I'm filling it with a, uh, I'm filling it with a function that is of type integer. If I change this to another data type, so let's say I change it to char, I should get an error. It might happen on compile, but I should get an error, but I'm not going to do that. Oh, that, that wasn't the right thing. Oh, smart guy. This is the right thing. I changed the integer inside the function. Did it work? Tech build solution. Yep. Where is it? Alright. Oh, you want this? Okay, let's do that and build it again. I just want to see if I'm going to get the error or not. Oh, it succeeded. Fancy that. Well, let's return the value of int because when I run that, it's going to fail. I know it will. All right, so in this case, let's go over what we did. We created a function called int max. Int is the data type. Remember what a function needs. It needs the data type, function name, parameters. Parameters are optional. You don't have to do parameters, but parameters can be put into the function and the function body. You can place it in the same file as I did, where I placed it underneath the main, or you can put it in its own file. Just understand that if you put it in its own file, you have to call that file's extension in the file you want to use it in. So in this case, in this case, if I wanted to call PCH class in console application one class, I need to include PCH class here. And then it will see int max. If I remove that, I think I should, I would, I'm gonna get an error. It still sees it, need debug. Well, let me build, there you go. Uh, unexpected end of file while looking for a pre-compiled header. Did you forget to include PCH? What, why is it telling you that? Because I have a function from PCH. So I'm going to include it. And that should go away. And it succeeded. So back to what we're doing here. Once again, we made our function in PCH. We ensured that PCH is being included in our main in our main file. This is our main. What's well, going to fire when the, fun, when, the, when the whole program fires is our main. And then we did some work here. So we created the variable, and I can make this unsigned just to be safe unsigned integer answer and then what I did is I gave it the function max I'm calling the function max out of the class PCH and I gave it arguments these are arguments that are gonna fill the parameters in the function so 5 and 8 are gonna fill the parameters X and Y when that function fires and what should happen is I should get a printout of the largest number because that's exactly what we did in our function let's run and see what happens The greater number is something that's not... Oh, there's eight. Where? Why did it do that? Hmm. I'm not happy about that. Why did it do that? Give me one second to figure out what happened. Because D is the correct... You know what? Let's do this. Let's not have that. There it is. The greater number is 8. Ha! That ampersand has been a, the bane of my existence. So here it is. The greater number is 8. Now, why did that work? 
Well, eight is greater than five. And in our function, we were checking to see which number was greater. In this case, eight was greater. We then made our function in PCH. Going over one more time. We wrote our function in PCH with all the correct things we needed. We needed the data type of the return value. We needed the name of the function. We needed parameters. In this case, we needed it because we were doing something with those parameters. You don't need parameters. You don't have to use them, but you, you can if you want to. And then we created our body. Remember, we returned the result. The result is a variable in the function max. We return the result when max is fired. What does that mean? That means that when max, the function max is fired, this is going to be replaced with whatever is in the, re the, re the return value, which is return result. It's going to be replaced by the result. Return is, is going to put the value of result here. So now answer isn't going to equal max 5, 8. It's going to equal whatever the larger number is, because that's what we calculated for. And that's it. That's all functions, function, de function declarations, function arguments, and uh, calling your function. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you want to hear more about C, C Sharp, Java, and, what, and, and whatever the case is, don't forget to, don't forget to subscribe. Ciao.